Hi everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 297. Today we're gonna be talking about saving money on groceries with recipe substitutions. So please stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into the show. Hello, so today I wanted to talk about how we can save money on groceries by using recipe substitutions, like substituting ingredients in our recipes. So the thing is with recipes, there's no rule to follow recipes exactly. A recipe is just something that someone created to make a meal. So there's no rule that says you must follow the recipe exactly as written. But I do have to say, please don't be one of those people who writes a recipe review after explaining how you changed almost the entire recipe. That drives me crazy. (laughs) Did you ever see that where you like are reading a recipe review and they're like, This recipe was really awful. Um, I substituted this for that, I substituted this for that, and I didn't include this, and you're just like, well, how can you even come on here and review this recipe? You didn't even make the recipe. (laughs) So anyway, I just wanted to point that out because it drives me nuts when I see that on a recipe site. But anyway, the thing is that with most recipes, you can substitute or leave out ingredients and still have a really good meal. Now, I'm not a huge baker. I do bake a lot of cookies and things like that, like during the holidays, but um, this isn't really uh, related to baking, because I know in baking there's a lot of specific, um, there's more like science involved and certain ingredients are really necessary for like how the end result turns out. So I'm really just talking about just like regular, like everyday cooking, like for your dinner meals and things that aren't like baking, just like regular cooking because there's a lot more flexibility um, in what you could do with regular, like just cooking like regular food, not baking type products. So one of the um, one of the tips that I have is to really just try and focus on using up what you have um, when you're cooking. So one of the easiest things and most rewarding things that I can do when I'm making a recipe is using up the ingredients I already have. Several times I've even used mozzarella cheese instead of cheddar cheese because I had a bag of shredded mozzarella that I didn't think would get used up. I've even done this with like mac and cheese where I had say maybe like half a bag of shredded cheese and half a bag of shredded mozzarella, like half shredded cheddar, half shredded mozzarella, two two half used bags. And because that's what I had on hand rather than taking out another um, thing of Uh, shredded cheddar, which I would have frozen because I keep them frozen and then I take them out as as I need them. If I knew that mozzarella cheese wasn't going to get used up, I just cooked both of them and substituted half mozzarella for half of whatever the cheddar was supposed to be. And it came out just fine. Most things will come out just fine, like with the cheese type thing example. It might come out a little bit different, but it's still good. Um, even I've even topped things that were supposed to be topped with cheddar with mozzarella instead, and it still came out really good. So sometimes I'll do a mix, but it just it just makes you feel so good to be able to use up what you have on hand. And I I just can't stand um, when I spend money on food and then I have to throw it away. So it just feels really good to be able to use up similar type ingredients in a recipe. For thing, you know, if you have things on hand that you could swap out, usually I find I do that the most. Like I said, with cheeses, like with shredded cheddar cheese or something like that. Um, and then also, even if I'm just a little bit short on an ingredient, a lot of times I will just put in the recipe what I have um, instead of buying more of that ingredient if I don't have the exact amount. Um, if I'm not sure that the leftovers of that are going to get used up, like whatever it is, if it's like, well, if I use this in this recipe and I buy more of it so that I have the exact amount, but I'm not sure it's then going to get used again in something else. A lot of times I'll just use up what I have left and that'll be good enough. Um, it might not be the exact amount that the recipe called for, but as long as it's close, I'd rather just use up what I have than buying more and then having to, um, now use up the rest of whatever's left from the new portion that I just bought. And before I go grocery shopping, I always check to see what I have that I might be able to use up instead of buying more of something. So using up what you have may or may not mean substituting ingredients, but it might just mean um, using a little bit less or a little bit more than what a recipe actually called for. With specialty ingredients, 
So often recipes call for a special type of spice or a cheese, and these can all get really expensive and they're often really hard to find. So unless it's like a special recipe that you really want to get like just right, you can usually skip or substitute some of those ingredients. Especially when it comes to like a huge list of seasonings, I'm definitely more of a skipper. Um, I sometimes actually like laugh when I'm reading through the list of seasonings in a recipe and thinking, nope, 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 as I'm going through the list of all the things I'm not going to include um, in the recipe. Because although they're, they're nice to have and I'm sure that they would make the recipe taste great, unless you're really like needing to have like a very specific taste and flavor that you're looking for, those all those different seasonings add up so much and then if you're not going to use them they're going to wind up and sit, sit, sitting there and going to waste and they're hard to find too and I, I don't know I, to me it doesn't really make that much of a difference I just want a decent meal and I'm usually more following the recipe just for kind of like a base plan to get something on our plate and I'm not too concerned about using all of the exact spices you can also even search um, for similar um, type seasonings to see if maybe you have something on hand that you could use to substitute um, if you do want to add some more seasonings or spices. I usually just kind of stick with like my basic seasonings like salt, pepper, um, garlic powder, onion powder, garlic salt, um, seasoned salt, that type of stuff. And then if I happen to have any of the other ones that are called for, I will use them. If not, I just don't really worry about it. Sometimes I'll add a little bit more of something else if it seems like it needs more flavoring. And if it doesn't, I just skip it. So for actual ingre like actual ingredient substitution, some common um, substitutions um, that you can use are, um, one of them is using ketchup instead of tomato paste. So I have not and probably would not do this in an actual pasta sauce recipe, but when a recipe calls for like say a tablespoon of tomato paste, I have many, many times substituted ketchup. I realized that I could portion out a can of tomato paste and use it as needed, but it's just something I know I'm not gonna do. I don't know why. Um, it's just not something I ever take the time to do. So one at one point in time, I looked up substitute for tomato paste for some recipe that called for like a tablespoon of tomato paste and I found um, that you could use ketchup as a substitute and I've been doing that ever since and I've never had a problem. Again, like I said, I wouldn't use it in a sauce recipe, like an actual, you know, if I was making like a homemade pasta sauce, I wouldn't use ketchup instead of the, um, the actual um, tomato paste. But if I'm just making the recipe that calls for like tomato paste as like just part of the overall big recipe, I've never had a problem using ketchup and it never tasted like ketchup. Another one is milk and vinegar for buttermilk. So I would imagine that most people don't normally have buttermilk on hand. And often a recipe um, is going to call for less than a portion in like more less than the portion size of however um, the containers of buttermilk are sold. So to avoid having to buy buttermilk and pouring half of it down the drain, you can easily substitute it with mixing one tablespoon of distilled vinegar, uh, white vinegar, with a cup of milk. And I forget, I was making I was making some recipe, I don't remember, oh my gosh, I can't remember what the recipe was, but it called for buttermilk and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have buttermilk and I didn't really want to go out and buy it and whatever it was, I just randomly needed it. It's not something I use often, but it was something that I thought like, oh great, I'm gonna to have to go out and buy buttermilk because I never would have imagined that there would be a substitute for that. But then when I looked it up and found you could do this with the milk and vinegar, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And it worked perfectly. So that's a really good one um, if on a rare occasion you wind up needing buttermilk for a recipe. Um, chicken or vegetable broth, those can usually be substituted with water um, if you need to. I mean, you can also substitute, like if it calls for chicken broth and you have vegetable broth or vice versa, you could substitute broths for each other. Um, or also, like I said, if you just don't have any broth on hand, you can definitely substitute with water for most recipes. Um, and then to make up for the lack of flavor, you can just add a little bit more seasonings. Obviously not if you're making a soup, you wouldn't want to substitute with water, but if it's more just like, maybe you're making like a rice dish that calls for um, broth, or you're making a pasta dish that calls for broth, you could definitely do water and extra seasoning instead if you don't have the broth on hand. 
I recently read that you can substitute sunflower seeds for pine nuts, so I have not tried this out yet, but I definitely will um, because I do grow basil in the summer and I've always wanted to try to make my own pesto. And I often have a hard time um, finding pine nuts. And when I did find them once, they were really expensive, so I didn't buy them. So maybe I will eventually just spend the money and buy the pine nuts and then also spend the money and get the sunflower seeds and maybe try and make both and then decide if um if it's easier to just use the sunflower seeds because they're easier to find and if it tastes the same um that would definitely be worth it so i'm going to give that one a try for sure pasta is definitely one of the easiest things to substitute um, the really only the really one thing to keep in mind is how the shape will impact the recipe. Like for example, say if you're making like um, peas and pasta, and you want a pasta that kind of like holds the peas, if that makes sense, like where kind of like the peas kind of like might go in like a shell. Like if you are making like a shell pasta, and you kind of are making something that has ingredients in it that you want the pasta to kind of hold it, or like certain pastas like hold sauces better than others. Um, but even if it's not, it doesn't matter. I mean, it'll still come out. It just won't come out ideal. Um, so, you know, you might just want to consider if you have a, a, a pasta that might do better than another as a substitute. Um, but either way, you can usually substitute most pastas in a recipe and you'll still get a good meal. It might not come out like what, you're, what you were originally intending, but it'll still be good and something to eat. One time I made vegetable lasagna that um, I had to use bow tie pasta to make the meal work because I prepared the vegetables and the sauce like filling for the lasagna. And then when I went to go grab the, the lasagna noodles, I realized I didn't have any left. I thought for sure I had them. And then I made this whole mixture of like you had to saute these vegetables and make this cream sauce and then mixed a regatta cheese and like this whole stuff and I got all the filling ready and then I went to go grab the noodles to cook them and I realized I did not have lasagna noodles and I definitely did not want to run out to the store to buy them. So what I wound up doing is I found that I had some bow tie pasta and I cooked up the bow tie pasta and I mixed it all together with the um, lasagna filling for the vegetable lasagna and then I baked it in the oven like a casserole. And it certainly was not lasagna, but it still came out really good. So I made it work. So just kind of um, be creative and see if you can find a way to get your meal to work with what you have to, by substituting certain ingredients rather than always having to spend that extra money um, to purchase exactly what the recipe calls for. And there are so many other, these were just like a few um, substitutions, but there are so many other recipe substitutions. So if you are making a recipe or planning to purchase something for a recipe that you have upcoming and you aren't familiar with an ingredient or you don't really wanna buy an ingredient or you wanna see if maybe you have something on hand you can use instead, just do a simple search on the internet and you will almost always find simple substitutions for ingredients in your recipes. Just a few other tips that I wanted to include. They're not really specifically to um, recipe substitutions, but just kind of other um, cooking, grocery type related tips that I wanted to share in this episode also. So if you do have to buy something specific that's not gonna be used up um, entirely with the recipe that you're making, try to look for other ways that it can be used. Like an example of this for me is with regatta cheese. So the recipe that I use for baked CD calls for 24 ounces of regatta cheese. Where I shop, for some reason, they always just seem to carry either 15-ounce containers or 32-ounce containers. So the best I could do is get two 15-ounce containers because regatta cheese isn't something that I'm going to substitute or skip. Um, and I can't really use all of that extra regatta cheese in the ziti. So I actually found that you can put regatta cheese on eggs. And I know it sounds kind of weird if you haven't done that before or maybe you just would never like that. But I actually like it. I tried it and I was like, this is really good. So... Um, so now what I do is each time, whenever I'm gonna make big ziti, I just save that extra regatta cheese and then for a few days in a row after we have that, I'll have um, eggs with the regatta cheese on top for breakfast for a few days. And then that way it all gets used up. So just kind of try and um, look and see if there's other alternative uses for any ingredients that you do choose to buy that you know you're gonna have excess of so that you can try and use those up and you're not spending money on things that um, you're, you're going to wind up getting thrown out. 
I also frequently do searches for what to do with leftover dot dot dot. For example, um, on Easter we had a lot of people over and I was kind of frantic getting everything ready. And during our Easter dinner, the mashed potatoes that I had prepared earlier in the day sat in the microwave while the microwave flashed end. So I had I made them earlier, I mashed them up and I put them in a container and I was like, cause I just was getting the timing of getting everything together. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just reheat these in the microwave when everyone gets here. So right before everything else was done, I put them in the microwave and heated them up. And then um, later on, I forget what I was talking about, saying something to my mom about when I was mashing the potatoes. And she's like, mashed potatoes? I didn't remember you having mashed potatoes out. And I ran over and I looked at the microwave and it was just flashing end. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're in the microwave. And this was like long after everybody had eaten dinner. So I couldn't even put them out. So um, I had to figure out what the heck I was going to do with these amount of mashed potatoes because it was so much. It was for like a whole, we had a lot of people over, so it was way more than what my family would just eat. So, um, you know, some did get eaten as leftovers with the rest of the food, but with the rest of what was left after that, I made potato pancakes with. So I know, yes, it's kind of obvious you have leftover mashed potatoes. What do you do with it? The first thing people think of usually I think is is, um, potato pancakes, but I didn't know how to make those. Um, And I did, you know, I did a quick search online and I found a really quick, easy recipe um, to make um, mash, leftover mashed, but it was called like leftover mashed potato, potato pancakes. And they came out really good and the mashed potatoes didn't go to waste because even though it was the same food, like had I just left the rest of those mashed potatoes in there, they wouldn't have gotten eaten because everybody was kind of tired of eating mashed potatoes and all the other Easter um, leftovers. So because I turned them into a new food, like a new, not a new food, but like a new recipe by preparing them a little bit differently. I served them as a side with another meal that we had and they'd all got eaten up. So just just do like a quick search for like what to do with leftover, blah, 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 whatever it is that you have. And you'll often find ways to kind of turn what you have into something else that you can wind up eating up instead of throwing it out. Another tip is just to um, keep granular bouillon on hand for broths. So unless a recipe specifically calls for a can of broth, I never use anything but bouillon because I can't stand to waste anything. And so often the amount of broth called for in a recipe are like odd amounts. So the whole can doesn't really ever get used um, a lot of times. So I know you can buy broth in resealable containers, but I never know when I'm going to be using it again. So I prefer to just keep bouillon in my cabinet. And if you haven't used it before, it's really just basically like dehydrated broth. um, And you just add water to it to make broth for however much you need for your recipe. So I find it really helpful to have on hand because you can make exactly what you need and it doesn't go bad for like a long time. It's just in a jar and Um, you just keep it or sometimes it comes in the cubes but I prefer the granulated kind because you can use exactly what you need and it dissolves much easier and then also tacos if you make if you have tacos off and you can make your own taco meat seasoning there's so many recipes online to make your own taco mix I go the super lazy route in this area and I just season the meat with seasoned salt and chili powder and my family all thinks it tastes good so I'm just sticking with that because it's just super easy and it takes me no time to make and I don't have to prepare like a, a seasoning in advance with all these different spices and things. So however you like to um, season your stuff just give it a try and try something simple and if it works then you could just keep it like that and not have to go crazy adding all these other Um, spices and seasonings if they don't really make much of an impact in your meal. So that is it for today. I hope something in here was helpful. I'd love to hear what you do um, for recipe substitutions. If there's any things that you substitute a lot or any tips that you have, that would be great. So don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. You can find blog posts for each episode on my website at lolasfrugallife.com. And you can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. If you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I can see you're listening. Also, if you can take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, That would be really helpful to me. Those ratings and reviews are what help get the show um, listed higher in search results when someone is listening to, uh, not listening to, looking for a show similar to this. And I do want to say thank you for the most recent review that I got. It was so, so nice. It was really long and detailed and I was just 
so thankful. I, um, I even screenshotted it and posted it on Instagram. It just made my day. So thank you so much. And the girl's name, I can't remember exactly. It was like two horsey girls or something like that. I can't remember the person's name who, like their name on the review was something like that. And I have two horses. So even I thought that was cool too, that they had like horsey in their name. <laughs> but either way, um, just the whole thing. It was super nice. So I really do appreciate the reviews just on a personal level, but then in addition, they do really help um, get the podcast shown up higher in search results. So I'd really appreciate if you have a minute to do that. There's also a link to financially support the podcast in the episode notes if that's something you're interested in. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a really awesome day. Are you in the mood to learn something new? Well, Skillshare is now offering one month free of Skillshare Premium. Unlock a passion, side hustle, or new professional skill with thousands of classes in design, business, and more. Start your one-month free trial now by using the link within the podcast notes for this episode. There's no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. So why not go ahead and learn a new skill that you have always wanted to have?